Hello and welcome back to Crazy Dove Studio. In this video, we will look at how to upgrade the OS on a data domain using the command line interface. To start with the video, let's assume that you you do not have access to the data domain system manager that is the GUI interface to the data domain and the only access you have is the CLI access. In this kind of a situation, it becomes a little tricky to uh, upload the packages into data domain operating system for the data domain upgrade and also for running the upgrade itself. So you can get the complete details of upgrading the data domain operating system by generating it on Solve. Solve is Dell EMC's tool for generating procedure documents for all operations on Dell based products. So Solve is also available online and uh, also as an offline application for Windows. Uh, the link to the online instance is in the description below. So to start with the upgrade, the first and the foremost important step is to go through the release notes. Because if in case there is any change in the features or compatibility that is not compatible with your existing environment then you would be in trouble if you just go ahead and upgrade your operating system because that might break the current functionality of your data protection environment. There are a few enhancements in the version 7.3 which is the operating system that I will be upgrading my networker or data domain system to. Uh, the main feature that I am excited is about the DDVE which can now scale up to 256 TB but this is only on AWS and GCP so initially the maximum capacity that a DDVE could support was 96 TB the other exciting uh, new functionality not a functionality as such but something new is that uh, the DDVE is now available on GCP marketplace which it was not earlier all right, so let's go ahead and start with uploading the RPM. So before uploading the RPM, you will have to download it from the support site. Here on your screen, I have the Dell EMC support site or the Dell support site for data domain operating system. And if you go uh, to the data domain uh, section of the support site, you will see all the operating systems that you can download for upgrading. Uh, you can download a copy from here and uh, then upload it to the data domain. Uploading the file to the data domain is not that straightforward because it is a closed system and you don't, do not have access to the shell of uh, the data domain operating system. So the best way to get your RPM file onto the data domain when you do not have access to the data manager is by using NFS. So in this step, let's go ahead and see how to set up the data domain to allow access to upload a file into the data domain through your networker server. So my networker server in this case uh, NSR Linux. So let's go ahead and check if that name is resolving to an IP address and it is. Uh, next let's go ahead and check the status of my NFS which is active and running right now and uh, you will see that the version 3 is enabled on this system. By default whenever you are uh, you enable NFS on data domain there are two export paths that are created. So export paths are basically the NFS shares that are available uh, over the network but since uh, NFS is for Linux the permission to these shares are based on the client and not on the user. So if I go ahead and now uh, list the exports show list, you will see that I have two parts, two export parts here. One is data and the other is DDR. So now we have to place the RPM for the upgrade in the path slash DDR slash releases for the data domain to be able to recognize the RPM file and to allow us to do the upgrade. So for that, as you can see here, we already have the DDVAR path exported. So we will add permission for the networker server to access this particular path. And to do that, we'll use the command NFS export add and the name of our path and the networker server. 
I left out something here which is clients so let's add clients and you can see that that is now added so if I run this command again you will see that it has one client now and to show which client is having access to that path we can use the command nfs show clients so now you can see that ddvar nsr linux has access to the ddvar uh, folder now so let's now hop on to our backup server to see how to mount the nfs share so to mount the nfs share first of all you need to install nfs utils package on in, on uh, the network server or whichever server that you have selected as a proxy to get on to the data domain so as you can see here i've already got this installed but uh, if you do not have it installed you need to install this particular package so once this is done we can go ahead and mount nfs export onto this server so that we can copy the file over so i have already copied my rpm file to the backup server so that i can easily copy it over to the data domain and uh, to mount this you can use the command mount minus t nfs ip address of the data domain which is 192.168.31.60 in my case colon slash no mount path and the location where you want to mount this so we already have a mount folder which is usually meant for this kind of uh, tasks so i'm going to use that and hit enter let's confirm by using df command and you will see that the nfs path is now or nfs share is now mounted on this system let's clear the screen let's go into the mnt folder which is basically the nfs share ddvar and if you can see that there are multiple files within this so this can also be used to access the logs and the code dumps so in case uh, you wanted access to it so we want to go into releases okay right now there is nothing in here my rpm is on my home directory so this is the upgrade file so i have to copy this over to the current location so i'm going to use cp and this file which is in my home directory over to the current location so this is copying so i'm going to pause for a few seconds or minutes until the copy completes and we'll continue once the copy is done all right so the copy is complete so let's go ahead and try to list it out so there we have it if you were on the system manager you could now see this particular file listed within the upgrade section so now that we have the file on the data domain let's switch over to the data domain system and there is no actual way to list the files available for upgrade uh, so the first step towards the upgrade is to do the pre-check which is the command system upgrade pre-check and the name of the file which i'm going to copy from here and paste it here and then hit enter so this might take a few minutes again and i'm going to again pause the video until this completes so that you don't have to wait and i'll show you the summary of uh, how exactly the pre-check went all right so the pre-check is now complete and you see that i have one component pre-check script fail which is just a warning and uh, the upgrade estimate time would be 60 minutes for the upgrade and there were no issues found for the pre-check so once that the pre-check is completed without any issues and you have no issues at all uh, then you can go ahead and proceed with the upgrade but if in case there is any issues that is reported during the pre-check you will have to reach out to the Dell support for data domain and get that resolved before you go ahead with the upgrade so that you do not end up with any issues after the uh, or during the upgrade itself so let's go ahead and start the upgrade now so to start the upgrade the same command again system upgrade but this time there is no pre-check keyword and we can straight away give the our name of the rpm file now once this starts it is going to reboot the data domain automatically 
make sure that you do not use the data domain for any purposes during the upgrade so make sure that the uh, devices are all unmounted on any of the backup applications that you are using unmounted on any of the uh, NFS uh, uh, shares that uh, wherever you have mounted and make sure that nobody has access to this when you're doing the upgrade itself so let me go ahead and start the upgrade so it is going to mention that the system upgrade command upgrades the data domain OS the file access is interrupted during the update uh, upgrade and the system reboots automatically after the upgrade so if you're okay with this go ahead and type in yes that you understand what's going on and this is going to start the upgrade process so this is again going to take a while so according to our uh, pre-check it might take up to 60 minutes so I'm going to pause the video here and get come back to you when the upgrade upgrade is completed now we see that the upgrade is just completed and the system is going for a reboot we'll check this after 20 to 30 minutes so that the upgrade completes during the beat boot up because after the system is upgraded the booting will take a, a few more minutes than usual so let's give maybe 20 to 30 minutes for the system to boot completely and then try to connect to it and see what the status or what version we have all right let's check the file status now all right and you can always uh, check the system show version here as well and it is 7.305 so this was the entire procedure on how to upgrade your data domain operating system using the command line interface thanks for sticking with me till the end of this video i hope you found this useful if you have any questions or comments, share it with our community in the comment section below or you can drop me a message at my Twitter account. I will see you on another video.